Hello and welcome to our online service today. My name is Rachel, I'm one of the leaders here and at New Life Church Centre and it's so great to be able to welcome you today to our online service. We're going to have a time of sung worship and then we're going to listen to the Word of God which is brought to us today by Pastor. So let's start by singing and uh, bringing our praise and worship. It says in Psalm 118 verse 24, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's just do that as we sing this first song together. Okay. 
together. I invite you to pray this prayer along with me and the words will come up on the screen. Dear Lord Jesus, I love you and worship you for all that you have done for me. And Lord, I long to worship you in spirit and in truth, just as you told the woman at the well. Thank you for making me in your own image and for all the many blessings and benefits that you have given to me. Lord, I surrender to you completely to present myself as a living sacrifice before you each day, to take up my cross daily and present myself to you as an act of worship. For you alone are worthy, for you alone are Lord. Lord, open my eyes to see you more. Open my ears to hear your still small voice and open my heart to worship you more and more so that I may grow in grace and the knowledge of my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Hello, it's wonderful to be able to share the Word of God again with you today. And uh, I'd like to take a, a story that Jesus told to really put across a real important point for life and living. And um, it's that story that perhaps is so very unfamiliar to so many of us, what we know as the Good Samaritan. Notice the emphasis is on good. But although we may be familiar with it, let us just for a moment or a few moments, let's review, of course, this most famous of stories that it is, but also relive and revisit this story again and enlarge really upon this most important aspect of the teaching that Jesus is trying to convey at that particular time. So let's just first of all read the story from the Gospel of Luke, of course, chapter 10. It says, On one occasion an expert in the law, this was a no fool by any means, stood up uh, to test Jesus. The teacher, he said, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, he uh, replied, How do you read it? And he answered, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and to love your neighbour as yourself. He says, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. <clears throat> but he wanted to justify himself. That's what we often do, don't we? Try to justify ourselves in life. And so he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, the man was going down from Jerusalem. The man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and when he fell into the hands of robbers and thieves. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. and When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he uh, took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus' simple reply was this. Jesus told him, go and do likewise, or do exactly the same. Go and do thou likewise. Here we find in this story, the Samaritan who had compassion, he had concern, he, he demonstrated care, and he really was putting himself out on this man's behalf. You see, traveling alone in those days was pretty much a dangerous business. You could be attacked by thieves and robbers and take advantage of. You will read of when Jesus, when he was 12, went to Jerusalem, that the family was traveling in groups together. That's the reason they did that, because of, uh, of safety and security against thieves and robbers. The question posed to Jesus was, who is my neighbor, though? We often think it's just the person that lives next door to that, but Jesus really took it far beyond that, didn't he? And Jesus really, through this parable, made it very clear that whoever we meet is our neighbour. Well, let's look at this example of this man travelling from Jerusalem to Jericho. This was a very popular road. It was a bit of a main thoroughfare, as we might sort of say. People were going up from Jericho to Jerusalem to worship. It was a good place for thieves and robbers to take advantage of a lone traveller. He was attacked 
the scripture tells us. They stole his clothes, so he, his raiment and his, his good outer clothes. Uh, they stripped him of those. His money that he was having and carrying, and he would be taking it, uh, of course, for whatever he needed it for. His possessions that he was carrying, of course. And they beat him up and left him half dead. This was a pretty brutal attack. He was left half dead. So you would gather from that that he was probably bleeding quite profusely and losing blood. But, you know, as he lay there, the scripture tells us, probably in a pool of his own blood, it would seem, he heard footsteps. And he probably thought, yes, hope is coming. Help is on its way. Help is coming. And as he looked up from the ground there, he saw a temple priest coming toward him. And he probably thought, couldn't be better. Couldn't be get better. God's representative has come. But then he got a shock of his life. For when the priest looked at him, he passed by on the other side, the scripture tells us. He looked over and probably saw all that blood and his fine white linen priestly robes. He's thinking probably, I'm going to get in a terrible mess. I can't look like that in front of all the uh, people when I get to the temple. And oh, as I said, by the way, this is supposed to be God's representative who was speaking or thinking probably this at that time. And he passed by on the other side. He was really indifferent to the needs of others. Not much of a representative of God, was he, eh? Remember, this man was beaten up so that he could not stagger towards Jericho. He was left half dead. Then a little later, of course, we read in, in the story that he heard the sound of feet approaching again and thought, at last, help. The priest didn't help me, but I'm sure the next person will. He was optimistic. <laughs> and this time, it was a Levite. Well, he's not quite so important as the priest, but he's a temple assistant. And oh, great, he probably thought. He'll help. He's not so important. Or, or maybe perhaps so busy, perhaps. He'll help. But the Levite looked upon him. And he probably probably thought perhaps there's something pretty similar to the priest. This will make me late, perhaps. And my clothes? Well, I really can't turn up with blood all on them. You know, compared to the priests in all their fine white robes, of course. I can't be seen to be like that now, can I? You know, the scripture said, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And that's what really is important. And he passed by on the other side. Now, remember, these are God's representatives You'd think they'd know better. You'd think they'd do better. You know, these are people who knew what the Old Testament taught. And the Old Testament taught so clearly, and it clearly teaches about taking care of strangers and not to be indifferent or to ignore their needs. Clearly teaches that. But the injured man probably thought, really now, all help was gone. If these religious leaders... Uh, can't be bothered to help me, then, you know, I don't stand much of a chance. But there as he lay there in his pool, the pool of his blood, you know, probably getting weaker by the moment. Then a little later, he heard the clip clop of donkey's hooves coming down the road. And when he heard these sound of these approaching hooves, and when he saw it was a Samaritan, he probably thought, oh no, it can't really get any worse, can it? Here we have a Samaritan who's a sworn enemy of the Jews. <laughs> he probably thought, I'm really now truly finished. He's never going to help me. He's more likely to finish me off than help me. But he's dead. Surprise, surprise. Sounds like, I could say, Silas here, but
But uh, that's an old programme on the TV. But surprise, surprise, a Samaritan is here. <laughs> a surprise of his life, he got down from the donkey and started to care for his wounds, binding them up to stem the flow of blood and bleeding. Administering basic, really, first aid and care to this man. He got him on his feet and onto his donkey, obviously too weak to walk because of the blood loss that he had uh, sustained. And he took him to an inn. Remember, there was no hospitals in those days. So, you know, this is the next best kind of a thing. So he was doing the best that he possibly could for this man. And he personally paid for his keep uh, in that inn. He got out his silver coins and paid him. He dug deep into his pockets, silver coins, it wasn't just pennies. He dug deep into his pockets and gave uh, to the innkeeper for his board and lodging and for the care for this man and for his board and care. And he, he, said, he said, if it costs you any more, I will repay you when I come again. So maybe he's one that passed through there and used that in frequently and he was known by the innkeeper or maybe he wasn't, but he paid up front and he said, I will reimburse you if it costs you any more. You know, this Samaritan, who really, they are sworn enemies of the Jews. He showed more care and more concern and compassion than these so-called religious leaders. When Jesus asked the question, who was neighbour to the one found on the roadside? It was obvious. The lawyer said, the Samaritan, of course. Then they answered, Jesus' reply was simply this, go and do thou likewise, or do the same. You see, it's not enough to be religious, pious, thinking we are so good, as it were, but to demonstrate that goodness. Remember that goodness, goodness is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If we're a born-again child of God, we should be manifesting that goodness in our lives. And Jesus drew uh, really a comparison between the religious attitude of the day and the practical application of God's love for others. Jesus said, remember, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father uh, who is in heaven. You know, you see, Whatever we do in the name of Jesus brings glory to God, our Heavenly Father. We sometimes don't realise that. Now, how do you measure up? I mean, how do you and I measure up? I mean, really measure up then. <laughs> what an example that Samaritan was. What an example. What about the people you find difficult to get along with. Remember the Samaritan, as I said, was a sworn, they were sworn enemies of the Jewish people. They would spit on the ground at the mention of the name or the person. That's how bad it was in their attitude to one another. Now we're not called to be religious, as people perhaps would say of us, but we are called to be righteous. And that is so important. Let's look at the Lord's ministry in Luke 4, 18 and 19. And I'm going to read it. When he stood up in the synagogue and read this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And there is now a demonstration or an explanation of what his ministry really is about. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners the recovering of sight to the blind and other words, physical relief, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes to his church and to his people, to each one that is, of course, born again, it is for a purpose, to touch and affect people with all of their needs. And that's why Jesus read this in the uh, synagogue that day the spirit of the lord is upon me we're indwelt of the holy spirit when we're born again that's what makes us different that makes our desires different and our love for god now it is birthed and born when we find him as our savior and anointed to preach good news to the poor we can share that message 
Send me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, those that are bound by all kinds of things in their life, holding them prisoner. Praise God, we have the words of life that bring freedom and life. Recovering of sight to the blind. Yes, spiritually blind or physically. Praise God for the healing power and healing touch that the Lord can bring in and upon a life. To release, release the oppressed. There's so many oppressed people in our world today. To bring that wonderful release by the power of the gospel, by the Holy Spirit, to claim the year of the Lord's favour. His favour is towards uh, people today and still is until he comes or calls us. It's so important. You know, when we're born again of the Spirit of God, it is for a purpose that we are indwelt of the Holy Spirit to touch and affect people with all of their needs. You see, we are not called, as I said, to be religious, as some would say about us. But we are called to be righteous. And out of that righteousness flows the wonderful fruits of the Holy Spirit. So let's take inspiration from the Good Samaritan teaching and follow his example. This was the teaching Jesus brought to make it very clear to the people what God's will was for them and how they were to live their lives. So whoever is our neighbour, whether it be friend or foe, good <laughs> or not so good perhaps, approachable and maybe the unapproachable even, the loveliest person you could ever meet. It's so nice to be able to talk to those people perhaps. But then of course, and then there is the most obnoxious person you could ever meet as well. They are all our neighbours and we can't deny that. Remember what Matthew 5.11 says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, Jesus is saying. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted, of course, the prophets who were before you. And so the Lord saying, this, this will happen. This will happen. Not everybody will accept you. But just let them know that God loves them. You are the salt of the earth, it goes on to say. And salt has that wonderful preserving uh, effect when it is applied. And it says, if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? We are that preserving effect when we can have an influence in our lives upon people round and about us, whether it be in the workplace or wherever we find ourselves. We can have that salt and light, as it were, uh, influence on people's lives. It is no longer good for anything, the scripture says, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. In other words, letting our light so shine, we are that salt application, that preserving effect, and bringing that wonderful news of the gospel, that wonderful glorious hope of salvation to others is so important. So which really uh, of the three do you think was neighbour uh, to him who fell amongst thieves, the scripture says? Well, the answer is, he said, he who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do thou likewise, or go and do exactly the same. You know, there is our command. There is our commandment, our instruction for all of us too. Jesus, we're not just speaking to that crowd. It's been recorded in scripture that we might receive that instruction for life and living now for him now. The Holy Spirit dwells us for his purposes to be. So be really encouraged today by this story. One that is so familiar possibly uh, to you, but nevertheless, one that is still so very important. You know, sometimes I've met people in the past that says, yes, I'm a born again Christian. But then I've heard of what their life has been about and what they've said and what they've done. Sometimes I've actually stood a, a few people back in a queue in a shop and I've, and I've heard them ranting and raving in a very unchristian and godly way. Uh, and I've been so disappointed of what I heard and what I've seen. It is so sad. And we then are such a bad example 
uh, to those who do not know the Lord Jesus. So we need to be very careful. We are called to be that salt. We are called to be that light. And we are called to be that influence. We are called to be like the Good Samaritan. Even though the people that we rub shoulders with might not accept us for who we are or whatever. Nevertheless, although he was a sworn enemy, he went out of his way. He reached out and he stooped down and helped this man that in such dire need. Let us do likewise also. Reach out, stoop down, touch and affect those that are around about our lives too, that we might be a blessing unto others. Let's just pray and ask the Lord to help us with this. Father, we thank you today for the word of God that's recorded here in scripture that we have read. It's for our benefit, for our growth, for our understanding. And although this may be fairly basic, to some to hear it is something that's very important for every day and for life and living lord doesn't matter how long we've walked with you we need to be reminded of the fact that we are called to have a servant's heart to stoop down to touch and affect those round and about us to be a blessing to others and to reach out on behalf of others. Help us to be that salter, that preserving, as it were, effect upon the lives of people. And Lord, take the example of the Good Samaritan. Although a sworn enemy, he had time for this unfortunate man in the situation in which he found himself. Help us, Lord, to find time, even for those that perhaps we do not perhaps uh, prefer to be amongst or get along with, or that can be sometimes quite uh, insulting or indifferent to us. Help us, Lord, to reach out and to stoop down, as it were, and to be touch, a touch and affect their lives too. It is so important. And help us to be a blessing in some way that we'll be like that good Samaritan in the next coming days. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's, as I said earlier, a privilege to be able to share the word of God and be a source of encouragement to you. And uh, as I say, if we can be a blessing anyway, obviously contact us or give us a call uh, in any particular way. By all means, the church is open now. We are here in New Life Church in uh, Headley Heath, Withal. Uh, by all means, our service is at 10.30 on a Sunday. Come along and uh, be blessed. Everything is socially distanced, of course. But uh, come along and enjoy the praises of God's people as we worship God and listen uh, to his word. Now, this week we have an extra announcement to make. We're having a, a, a church cafe uh, opened on a Thursday afternoon from two through to four. So people can come along, have a cup of tea and coffee, some cake and, uh, and have a little fellowship, be a source of encouragement, sort of midweek, as it might sort of say. Uh, with one another uh, and just be a source of encouragement yet again so just take time uh, jump in your car or get on your bike or whatever it might be and just come and pay us a visit and, and just uh, have a little fellowship a very informal way of course not a service it's just a, a church cafe as we might call it just a time we can sit down and have a cuppa as we might say and a little fellowship be a source of encouragement a midweek break as you might say from the mundane things that we're normally a part of. So God bless you. Be a blessing to someone. Be a good Samaritan to someone uh, in some measure, in some way this week. God bless you. Mm -hmm.